Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We wanted to do a video for you that will help you with a little bit of a shortcut when you're trying to do u-substitution and you really only need to do u-substitution for a constant multiple of x inside of a function. We wanted to show you a short workaround for that. As we start working with more and more complicated functions, doing just a u-substitution for a constant multiple only means you may end up having to do more than one substitution and we just wanted to provide a way around that for you. So imagine if you were doing the derivative of this thing here, sine of 3x, right? The only thing being done to x inside of this sine operation that requires the chain rule is actually this constant multiple of 3. So when we do the chain rule for derivatives, we start outside first and we say derivative of sine is cosine, leaving the inside alone. So we have cosine of 3x. The chain rule, remember then, times the derivative of the inside, we would get times 3 out front. The chain rule is just giving us times 3 because the only thing being done to x inside was multiplied by a constant. So we get that constant multiple on the outside from the chain rule. So think about now if we had the antiderivative of cosine of 3x dx. So inside we have a 3x and we could certainly do u equals 3x as a u substitution and get the answer for this. But because this is just a constant multiple, what we want to make sure you realize is the opposite thing is going to happen as far as the constant multiple here. With the derivatives, if you have only a constant multiple inside, you will get multiplied by that constant multiple from the chain rule. With antiderivatives, I take the antiderivative of cosine x, which is sine of 3x. We definitely get plus a constant. But the reciprocal of the constant multiple inside is going to come out. In other words, the only thing supplied by the chain rule here is times 3, and the opposite of times 3 is divide by 3 here. So we actually get 1 third sine of 3x plus c. So a couple of things that just is for a constant multiple of x inside of a definition you know. If this was a 3x squared in here or a 3x to the 4, we wouldn't be able to do those things with the constant multiple of 3 because it would involve something more complicated than just that constant multiple. We'll show you a few examples of where this applies here. So you notice in here we have the integral of e to the negative 2x. So really our constant multiple is negative 2 here. If we were doing the derivative, we would get multiply by negative 2 coming out front. So in this instance, we actually get divide by negative 2. So our antiderivative without doing the substitution here would actually be e to the negative 2x divided by negative 2 plus c. And a nicer way to say that I think is probably negative one half e to the negative 2x plus c. So again, reciprocal of our constant multiple negative 2 came out front and multiplied. If this was some other power of x or there was some function that was more complicated than just constant multiple of x in here, then we wouldn't be able to use this shortcut. So just be really careful with these. For this one here, the integral of secant squared 5x dx. Now we could go ahead and use a u substitution for u equals 5x. Now we do know the antiderivative probably of secant squared of x. We know that that's tangent x, right? So what we can do for a shortcut for this one is say tangent of 5x. But now the reciprocal of the multiple inside is going to come out, so we'll actually get 1 fifth tangent of 5x plus c. And again, you'll see if you work out the u substitution, you do in fact get the same thing that we got here. Let's look at another integral of 4 times sine of x over 2 dx. So our constant multiple, this x over 2, the constant multiple is actually 1 half in here, right? So let's go ahead and think about, we'll keep the constant multiple of 4. We think next, what is the antiderivative of sine? It is negative cosine, so we'll have negative cosine of x over 2. And then we'll have the reciprocal of the 1 half coming out because the only thing being done to x here is multiply by a half. The reciprocal of a half is 2, so we'll multiply by 2 on the outside. We will get negative 8 cosine of x over 2 for this one, plus our constant. Last one here, we have again an exponential, so we have the integral of e to the negative x over 4. We want to sort of see this exponent as negative 1 fourth times x, so it's just a constant multiple of x. So we look at the antiderivative of exponential would be itself. So we'll get e to the negative x over 4. And we would multiply out front by the reciprocal of this, so that would be a negative 4 in the front. So we would get negative 4 e to the negative x over 4 plus our constant. 
And if you are starting out with this and this shortcut seems a bit much for you at first, we recommend not using it. You can go ahead and work back through all of these, doing the U substitution and seeing how that DU is going to give you that reciprocal each time through the process. In our integration videos from here forward in our series, we're not actually going to do a full U substitution process for anything that's just a constant multiple. Beyond constant multiple, we will of course show all the details of our U substitutions, but moving forward from this point in our integration series, the rest of these, we will just go ahead and use this multiply by reciprocal rule out front whenever our U sub would only be for a constant multiple. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.